hey guys welcome back um in this video we will start fleshing out or putting in more tables into our school management database now coming off the last topic of relationships foreign keys and normalization people generally say that oh they don't know where to start or how to start they know that stuff needs to be related but then sometimes they get it in the wrong direction now when i'm designing a database what i like to do is start with the tables that i know are atomic when i say atomic i mean that they have no dependencies and they can exist entirely on their own so we already started that process here with our school management database where we said courses and students now a student can exist entirely on their own the student is the student right um the student can be there technically without a course, because if they pay the school fee for the general fees, they're allowed to come on the campus, but they may not be taking a course. So the student can exist with no association to a course. Just the same way I can create a school and I am offering courses and I don't have any students just yet. So a course can exist on its own. And, and that is a, that is something that you can actually employ when trying to decide what is atomic or not think about it in a real life scenario if in real life this element or this entity can exist without dependency on another one right so that is the first step so when designing a database i always start with the atomic elements those that can exist by themselves so we're actually just going to create about two more tables for this section to begin um, this concept, I'm going to go ahead and use the editor and I'm going to create another table and this one will be for teachers. So we all know that we always start off with an ID primary key. You can say ID or just teacher ID, whichever one, it, depending on your naming convention. And we'll give ID a type of int. And of course we go down here. We are all professionals at this by now. So we know that we just go and make it the identity. And we also flag it as primary key, which we can just right click and say set primary key. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill out the details of this. Um, give me a few. All right, so I filled out some columns here. I gave the teachers record a first name, a last name, and the date joined, and I used the wrong data type there. So I'll just say date time. And of course, we could just say date. So we just say date. Um, and then what we would be tempted to do, and I could completely understand if you'd be tempted to put course ID or associate this lecturer or teacher with a course right here. And of course, we're talking about foreign keys and primary keys. So you're thinking that, okay, so clearly a teacher has to have a course teaching, which is, which is fair, but then a teacher can also teach many courses. So that is something you need to take into consideration because then if we put an ID here for the course ID, then we're, we're only associating this teacher record with one course at a time. And so if this teacher is teaching another course, how would we accommodate that? We would have to repeat all of these details and set another course ID, which is not the optimal way to store our data in a relational database setting. All right, so that is one of those caveats that people would run into where they would try to put the foreign key at the wrong place because really and truly the teacher, like I said in the beginning, can exist in my school and not be teaching because maybe as a free semester, maybe as a specialist, I don't know, but I can have a teacher, I can hire a teacher, and because I have no students, I'm offering courses, but I have no students, then this teacher is not actively teaching a course. So I'm going to leave the teacher table like this and save. Okay. So now we have three tables. I can just go and refresh. And I have three tables. I have my courses, I have my students, and I have my teachers. Once again, they're all atomic. So you would probably say, okay, so how do I relate the teacher to a course now let us explore once again in real life i have a school right now i have a course when i created this database course the course was there um yes i was a teacher and but i had no students what you did was enroll into this course and then 
the, the platform that you're learning this course on then said that me, Trevor Williams, the teacher, yeah, it will be associated with this course because I have many courses on this platform and you, the student, will be associated with this course with this teacher. And I'm sure you're doing more multiple courses on this platform. And so that kind of relational relationship needs to exist between the course, the student, and the teacher. So setting a, a foreign key in any one of these tables would not fully accommodate that kind of three-part relationship because at some point, something will have to repeat in these three tables with details being spread all over the place. And what we want to reduce is the spreading of details in multiple places. So when we see this situation where trying to associate two tables with each other will lead to some duplication of details in the long run, what we do is have another table that is going to facilitate these relationships, all right? So what I'm going to do is create a new table and call it enrollment. So I'm just going to say ID, give it the primary key, and we make it identity, all right? So it's auto-incrementing. And then I'm going to have, and once again, let me just save this table from now so we know what we're working with. This is enrollments. So an enrollment can only exist if we have a teacher with a course with at least one student. And then we have an enrollment because the student is enrolled in a class being taught by this teacher, right? So then we'll create teacher ID. So this is the person teaching and it's teacher ID. So it has to be an integer, all right? At least based on our design so far. We have student ID because the teacher is teaching this student and I'll just keep my casing consistent. And then we have the course that these, that this teacher and this student are both going to be involved in. All right. And that is the beginning and I'll just save this quickly so we can get it updated. That is the beginning of the creation of a foreign key. Now there's, another step that needs to occur. So now we need to actually have the relationship. So yes, we created the, the foreign key properties, but they're not foreign keys yet because we need to actually establish the relationship between this and the teacher table. And then that is what will give us what we call database integrity when you know that the relationship and the constraints are there. Once a constraint is there, then teacher ID can never ever have a value that is not present in the teacher table. If I have five teachers and they are numbered IDs one through five, then teacher ID can never ever get a value of 10. So as it stands, that can happen because there are no constraints. There's no actual relationship. It's just a record saying, oh, this is the teacher ID, teacher ID should go here. But once I create this relationship, we set up the constraint and we discussed constraints in our design that that's a limitation to what can actually occur in this column. And what we will do now is actually just right click on the first one, which is teacher ID. And then you'll see that they have an option relationships. That brings up a dialog box, which allows us to add, all right? And then that creates some generic thing and you see enrollments, enrollments, that's not really what we want. So the name of the foreign key here usually indicates the tables that are related to each other. So what we want is enrollments to be related to teacher. So we'll click on this one and then we go over to this side and drop down the tables and column specifications. And we can just click the ellipsis button here and then that brings up another dialog box, which is reiterating our name. And the one is here for me because I, I had started it before. So this is what yours would look like, and that's fine. And then what we want to say is, what is the primary key table? Now, do recall our primary key for teacher ID is stored in our teacher table. So our primary key is coming from our teacher table. And the column that has that primary key is our ID column. See that? So when I switched it to teacher, it gave me the drop down and I select ID. 
And I want the ID from teacher, from the teacher table to be directly associated with which column in the enrollment table. So it's already, it's graying out the foreign key table because it knows it's a foreign key table. I'm initiating this relationship creation from the foreign key table. So it's going to make that assumption, but it doesn't know what column. So I'm going to go ahead and I have the responsibility of naming my columns such that I can know exactly what the relationship is. All right, so there's no direct stipulation that teacher ID has to be named that way. I could have said puppy's ID, but that would be very bad practice on my part because later down the line, if somebody inherits this database, they would know why puppies is related to teachers, right? So I kept call the teacher ID so that if I did this work, fell asleep and looked at it the next day, I could remember that teacher ID was earmarked to be the foreign key column for my teacher relationship. So teacher ID here in our enrollments table will be directly related to the ID column from our teacher table. And then I click OK. And then you probably just want to update the name here just to say enrollments teachers, just so that if you look at it tomorrow, you know that this foreign key is between the enrollments and the teachers. And then you can click close. All right. And then you see it made a change and it's asking us to save. And then by when we are when it asks us to save, it's telling us that we're about to make some changes to the teacher and enrollment. So that means it's making some structural change in the back end to associate the teacher and the enrollments. So I can just click yes and that will happen that that will be accepted so i'll just go ahead and do that same activity for student id and i'll do them slowly so we have the first one and then we can just go ahead and add and now we're going to do the same steps where we just click on our ellipsis button in the tables and column specifications space and then this time we're doing student id so i say i want the primary key table to be students and then when I drop this down, you see all of the student columns, but I know I'm only interested in the ID. And on the foreign key side, I am only interested in student ID. And so I click OK. And then this one was automatically named because I didn't edit it. So that is what should happen. That is what probably happened for you and teachers. And that is what really should happen. So once you set up that relationship, it will actually rename it accordingly. All right. And then we notice that it's the same step regardless of which one we click. So even if we close this and then do it on the other one, we're still going to get back this dialog box. So what I'm going to do is stay here and just go ahead and add another because I know I have a third one to add. So I just click add and that gives me a third foreign key relationship. And then I'll just click that. And then this time we're dealing with course. So courses and then drop it down and we see course ID. So you see that sometimes I have ID, sometimes I have course ID. So in the courses table, I could have said ID, but I think I explained earlier that, you know, it can be used interchangeably. It's up to you and your pattern and your standards. And so courses, course ID, and in the enrollments table, the foreign key column is course ID. All right, so we see a direct match there. So sometimes I don't like doing this because having course ID in the home table and then in the foreign key table can lead to confusion at times. Um, but so I usually just use ID as the ID column. So we can just go ahead and continue, click OK. And so we have our three foreign keys, enrollments to courses, enrollments to students, and enrollments to teachers. So that is saying that the enrollments table is now directly related to courses, students, and teachers. So once again, the, the whole purpose of adding those relationships is to set the constraints between what value is allowed here relative to what value is available here. If the value is not available here, meaning there is no course with ID 10, then the enrollments table cannot have 10 in this column because this column is directly bound to the ID column in our in our parent table, all right? So I'll just go ahead and save this and you see that it is trying to make changes to all the tables that were involved in that relationship creation process. We click yes and voila. Now we can refresh the tables and see our newly created table there. 
And if I drill down then and click under keys, then you see that this enrollments table actually has four keys, all right? But then if you take keen, pay keen attention to the direction of this key, you see that this one is pointed to the left and that's the PK. So that's showing you that's primary key. And then all the others are pointing to the right to show you foreign key. In SQL Express um, Distro, they do not have that capability to show you the database diagram. You may have to download that separately or use developer to get that functionality. But at the end of the day, you can always just ensure that those keys are there and you know that those are created properly. Now I'm going to add one more column to this table and I'm going to call it grade. And the reasoning behind this is when we have a student doing a course, he needs a grade, right? But then they're all atomic. So I can't put grade in the course because there are many students doing the course and that, that wouldn't make sense trying to track the grade in the courses table. And the student is doing many courses, so he's going to have many grades. So it doesn't make sense me trying to put the grade on the student's record. So what I would do is just put it in the enrollments section where I know that the teacher who is teaching the student through this course is going to give them a grade for this course, all right? So that is, that is the kind of thinking you have to employ when designing a database. So once again, this enrollments table is going to have the teacher who is teaching the student and many teachers can be teaching many students at any time and they can be teaching them multiple courses, right? And so for each instance where you have this specific teacher teaching this specific student in this specific course, we give them this specific grade. So even if they repeat, we know that each record is going to have a unique grade to these three values. So I can just give that N char, I'll just leave it at N char and the grade would be a letter grade. So I'll just say one, or let me say two, because it could be A minus. So I'm going to give them two characters to put in that grade. And I'll just save changes to that table. And so we have that relationship table. This table is a bridge to allow these three tables to be related to each other, all right? And there are situations where you have you know, you have a table and you're going to put in a foreign key um, in that table. So this was not one of those scenarios. So it's not a one size fits all. You don't just look at one relational database and then say, oh, I'm going to use those exact techniques to build my own database. In the school management system, uh, the, the different rules apply to the previous system, the previous database that I was shown you in the last video where I was doing uh, predictions for World Cup matches, all right? So you just have to understand the core concepts and apply them as you go along. So once again, is this entity going to be atomic or is it going to have dependencies? In this situation, a course doesn't have a dependency, a student doesn't have a dependency, and a teacher doesn't have a dependency. All can exist by themselves. However, for an enrollment to occur, I can only have a record of a teacher teaching a student and this course through an enrollment. And so my enrollments table has the dependencies on the teacher table, the student table, and the course table. And well, it has its own columns afterwards. So you could always flesh this out and add on date of enrollment or date of start date and, la and end date. So this would actually create an instance of when somebody being a student was taking a class being taught by this teacher the start of the semester the end of the semester those kind of things you can always put into this but it does have three dependencies on three different tables all right thanks for watching do remember to leave any feedback or ask any questions if you are still unclear as to what was going on here i'll be quick to reach out